so happy to introduce to you Reverend Nobuaki Hanaoka. He was an infant when the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Japan on August 9, 1945. His mother and sister died from illnesses linked to radiation poisoning, and his brother died at age 39 from premature aging associated with fallout from the bomb. Reverend Hanaoka is a retired minister in the United Methodist Church who came to the U.S. following seminary training in Japan. He has settled in the Bay Area where he speaks, writes, and teaches on topics of peace and human rights. We are very honored. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Hanaoka here with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Here in Livermore, we have gathered to commemorate the 71st anniversary of the atomic bombing in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We have gathered to remember those who perished in the bombings, nuclear bombings of those cities. And to renew our commitment never to repeat it anywhere in the world. The numbers of those who died from the atomic bombs within the four month period were estimated at 140,000 in Hiroshima and 80,000 in Nagasaki. Though many of those who survived call those who died instantly, they are the lucky ones. Because many of them have had to suffer all kinds of ailments, both physically and mentally. And I was talking to someone in, the, in here. Uh, some families were in denial and refused to talk about it, including my own family. According to the recent report released by the Japanese government, they added those who have since died of the radiation-related illnesses. Uh, the numbers were 242,437 in Hiroshima and 137,339 in Nagasaki. Those are not an estimate, but the real numbers of real people with real names. Actually, the number would go up even higher if you include those who have been killed by the uh, radioactive fallout in the nearby cities and towns, or even faraway cities. When the atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki 71 years ago, fortunately it missed the mark, and the initial impact of heat and blast was confined to Urakami Valley and the city center appeared to have been spared. But more insidious was the invisible radiation. The radioactive dust covered the entire city and the wind carried it into nearby towns and cities miles away. I think our family home was about 15 miles from the city. The blast that flattened the city did not blow our homes away. The fireball of 300,000 degrees centigrade that engulfed the city of Nagasaki did not reach us. But the wind carried the radioactive fallout to the areas including the town where we lived. It contaminated the air we breathed, the water we drank, and the food we ate just as much. We were the downwinders, and there was no official tallies of those who died from the fallout. I was born on December 25th, 1944. I was just a baby, too young to remember anything. But as far back as I can remember, both my mother and my sister looked very pale. They're always sick in bed.
When my father came home from the war, he moved us out of the Nagasaki area and moved to another prefecture, Kumamoto and Fukuoka, eventually. But both my mother and my sister died when I was six years of age. When my sister died, I overheard my father and her doctor talking in harsh voices. My father asked him what would happen to me, his youngest child, since I was exposed to the same radiation that killed my mother and my sister. The doctor said to him that I may not live to see my 10th birthday. I did not tell, it, tell anyone that I heard that conversation. I internalized it. I repeated it a number of times, over and over again in my mind. I was so distressed that I stopped talking altogether for a few months. I couldn't talk. But I'm fortunate enough to stand here to talk about it, about it this morning. The radiation did not have the same effect on me as it did on my mother and my sister. Plutonium bomb dropped on Nagasaki named Fat Man yielded 21 ki ki uh, kilotons of TNT. The uranium bomb on Hiroshima exploded with a force of 15 kilotons. Compare them to the hydrogen bomb accidentally released from the bomber uh, over North Carolina in 1961. It did not detonate, but if it did, it would have yielded 3.8 megatons, or 260 times more powerful than the one dropped on Hiroshima. Nuclear bombs are designed to wipe out large population centers, and the invisible radiation will keep killing millions more all around the globe. In 2011, the earthquake and tsunami damaged the nuclear power plants in Fukushima, Japan. Five years later today, over 100,000 people are not allowed to go home because parts of Fukushima are still contaminated with high level of radiation despite their decontamination efforts. A nuclear weapon kills indiscriminately. It kills soldiers and civilians children and adults, men and women, saints and sinners. After it kills instantly, it keeps killing slowly for many years. It is the most insidious, most inhumane, most immoral weapons of ultimate mass murder. Such weapons should not be allowed on the face of the earth. Under the New START Treaty between Russia and the U.S., we're reducing the number of nuclear warheads to 1,550 on deployed ICBMs, deployed SLBMs, submarine launched, and deployed heavy bombers by the year 2018. If you include the non-deployed nuclear warheads, the total of U.S. stockpile will be approximately 4,000. The number may be de dropping, but they are modernized and much more deadly, and their delivery systems are more accurate and more efficient due to the cutting edge science and technology applied to the development of such nuclear weapons right here at Lawrence Livermore Nuclear Lab. The current U.S. policy is that our nuclear weapons are only for the deterrence purposes. But Mr. Trump, who might become our next president, refuses to rule out the possibility of actually using it for offensive purposes, and even against our allies in Europe, and proposes that both Japan and Korea develop their own nuclear weapons. Kim Jong-un's incomprehensible regime in North Korea now possesses a stockpile of small number of nuclear warheads with a long range 
delivery system. Their declared primary target is Tokyo. They have been testing their ballistic missiles, and last month one fell near the western shore of Japan, only 150 miles off the coast of Japan. And China refuses to negotiate nuclear arms reduction with us. The nuclear program looks lacks transparency, and we don't know what we're dealing with. The situation in East Asia is indeed volatile, to say the least. Besides, any terrorist might get hold of nuclear weapon materials. They may not be able to make sophisticated weapons, but use of any nuclear material for terrorism purpose causes a, thre a serious threat to the world. The nuclear weapons did not make the world safer. It has made the world more dangerous than ever before. We must now go beyond the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and demand all nations to give up their nuclear strategies and dismantle these inhumane, immoral, and criminal weapons of annihilation. As we remember those who died from the nuclear bombs dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, let us renew our commitment never to allow the use of such inhumane, immoral criminal weapons of indiscriminate killings. We are happy to join the Marshall Islands people and the people of Navajo and Hopi nations as well as many others who have been contaminated because of the mining, milling, purifying, and testing, as along with the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. May God bless you all. Thank you.